Hello and welcome. Today we'll be taking a trip through our atmosphere and into Earth's orbit. We'll be learning about what Stephen Hawking deems as being the most important discovery of the century, if not all time, the Cosmic Background Explorer. Please, come along on a truly fascinating journey through time into the groovy 80s, where me and my friend Riley will serve as your trusty guides. Wait a second, I'm forgetting somebody. I can't honestly think who. Oh yeah, of course, Rachel also. She helped us out a little bit. So, let's jump into things. The primary mission of the Cosmic Background Explorer was to gather and log shortwave diffuse radiation. The Cosmic Background Explorer goes by many names. Cosmic Background Explorer, Kobe, Kubi, and Kobe Bryant. Wow, shortwave diffuse radiation. Sounds complicated, but it's really not. The Kobe satellite housed three instruments. The differential microwave radiometer, a far infrared absolute spectrometer, and the diffuse infrared background experiment. NASA's process to capture diffuse radiation began with the diffuse infrared background experiment. Its job was to simply locate the solar radiation and record position information. The differential microwave radiometer would observe and map changes in light concentrations. In short, a thermal camera for radiation. The third and possibly most important instrument was the Far Infrared Absolute Spectrometer, or FIRAS. FIRAS contrasted data from the DMR and diffuse infrared background experiment with an ultra dark black body. The contrast with the black body helps to bring out the light and filter out the unwanted pollution. So, by the end of the mission, NASA had multiple sets of developed images of the diffuse radiation. The images helped scientists see remnants of the Big Bang and formulate a better understanding on how our universe came to be. When the Big Bang, well, banged, it slathered solar energy across the entire universe and continues to to this day. But because the edge of the universe is so far away, there's a lot of time and space between us and it. So eventually, the waves emitted from the edge of the universe become diffused and distorted. NASA captured a few variations of the images. They varied because the limitations placed on the instruments and how different exposures from different missions affected that. The instrument cluster received radiation waves in the 3K spectrum that ranged from 100 micrometers to 1 centimeter in length. Along with that, it also recorded the anisotropy spectrum and angular distribution of the deep space radiation. Again, I know, scary words. Anisotropy is essentially a wave's ability to stay directional dependent or stay in a straight path. Spectrum is like the specific length of a wave from short to long. In this case, the instrument measured wavelengths ranging from 1 to 300 micrometers across the whole spectrum. During one segment, NASA specifically set the instruments to receive waves only in the 3K spectrum at 100 micrometers to 1 centimeter in length. The purpose of this was to get the best image of the background radiation as possible. The angular distribution is much like anisotropy, but slightly different. The anisotropy determines how perpendicular each line is, while the angular distribution determines the angle the perpendicular lines enter the instrument relative to the datum plane. Power came from the solar panels, but when it came to actually gathering data, the scientists found that the instruments would overheat as a result of being in a vacuum, being exposed to the sun while running very inefficient 80s technology. They countered this by filling a 500 liter flask with liquid helium in an attempt to cool the instruments. This worked like a charm until it ran out. Kobe was screwed. Though, the DMR could still function and went on to make many more discoveries for many, 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 many years under wallops. Other individual discoveries were also made. The diffuse infrared background experiment also detected 10 new far infrared emitting galaxies, as well as 9 other candidates that might also be spiral galaxies. It was also able to conduct studies on interplanetary dust and determine if the dust came from a comet or asteroid. The idea for a cosmic background explorer stemmed from NASA's Office of Space Science Application located in the United States. The total cost for COBE was average for a satellite, around $150 million, including the cost of both the spacecraft and the measuring instruments. It was launched November 18th of 1989 and was terminated December 23rd of 1993. For the nine years and 2,000 man years of effort that it took to complete Kobe, the four years it spent in orbit is a short period of time, but some of the most superlative discoveries regarding the origin of the universe have been made through the launch of the Kobe satellite. 
Led by Dr. John Mather, the COBE satellite obtained information from three instruments, the Differential Microwave Radiometer, DMR, the Diffuse Infrared Background Experiment, DIRBE, and the Far Infrared Absolute Spectrometer, FIRAS. FIRAS compared the spectrum of the cosmic microwave background to a precise black body. DMR precisely mapped the cosmic radiation, and DIRBE was the instrument that search for cosmic infrared background. These instruments did a complete scan of the celestial sphere every six months. After the mission ended in November 1989, their operation was transferred to Wallops to load the rest of its days as a research satellite. Discoveries made with the Cosmic Background Explorer revolutionized our understanding of the early cosmos. It precisely measured and mapped the oldest light in the universe in a way that couldn't have been done with any other space satellite. These measurements helped eliminate other hypotheses of how the universe came to be and confirmed the origin of our universe as the Big Bang. The mission ushered cosmologists into a new era of precision measurements, paving the way for deeper exploration of the microwave background by NASA's WMAP mission and ESA's Planck mission. Kobe measured with immense accuracy, within 0.005%. These results greatly increased our knowledge of the Big Bang and the overall creation of the universe. Overall, Kobe's mission was an immense success, finding the answer to a question that has been asked since man has existed, how everything came to be. Explorer 66 inspired many other missions, such as the WMAP mission and the Planck mission. One can only hope that humanity's thirst for exploration and quest for knowledge will continue to fuel endeavors like the preceding projects. Space is endless, much alike the discoveries that come with it. These measurements helped eliminate other <laughs> These measurements helped <laughs> The purpose of this was to get the best image of the background radiation as possible and the <laughs> No it <laughs> The images helped scientists see remnants of the Big Bang and formulate a better understanding on how our universe came to be well, when the Bing, the Bing Bang. <laughs> the third and possibly most important instrument was the Far Infrared Absolute Spectrometer, or FIRAS. FIRAS contrasted data. We <laughs> 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 gotta stop this. FIRAS compared the spectrum of the cosmic micro. <laughs> FIRAS can. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Strategy.